now we'll just spray this down with some Windex. And we're going to use my anvil caulking tool to remove the excess. So I got a nice joint there, and then it doesn't even matter that it's going into those grout joints. So I think it is going to be a nice way to finish this. I think that it's going to work really nicely. There is no question. Doing the caulking before grouting really makes a world of difference. It looks amazing. I'm really happy with the way that works out. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the tub for our final part of the caulking here. And one thing you wanna do is make sure that you have a bunch of different options for caulking. So one of my favorite is this anvil caulking tool. All right, so we're getting into the final stages here. We're gonna grout this entire bathroom with one of my favorite grouts. This is Mape FA. And as you can see, it's a 10 pound bag. I actually got multiple size or multiple bags of this. And because I really do recommend if you're gonna use this to do smaller quantities. And if you get the 10 pound bags, you can mix it to the right ratio so that you always have a consistent ratio when you're actually applying the, the grout. But a couple of reasons why I like this. Number one, it's fast setting. I can really move on with my project. I basically can grout this whole bathroom probably about in an hour or so and be able to move on with my project. So it's fast setting. Secondly, it has a very fine aggregate. So it can go down to 16th inch grout joints, but it also has an aggregate in it. So it's not like sanded grout, but it has the strength of sanded grout. So anything with an aggregate is gonna be a stronger grout joint and it's gonna last a lot longer. So being a fine consistency like that is really nice. It's also, in my mind, easier to clean. Uh, I think anything that's gritty, anything that has a lot of sand in it, is something that is just gonna be a surface that's gonna collect soap scum and all types of other things and cause problems for cleaning. So having a fine aggregate makes a lot of sense. And then thirdly, it's, it's affordable. You know, it's not costing a whole fortune to use this. So it makes a lot of sense in a, in a bathroom like this. It is stain resistant, so you don't necessarily have to seal it, but I would recommend sealing this as well. Um, it just, it's better, especially with the lighter colors, you're better off to seal it a couple of days afterwards. But we're gonna go ahead and show you how to put this in. It's really a simple process, and I think you'll love it too. So a couple of tools that you're gonna to wanna to have on hand. One, it really makes a big difference is having a good grout float. This is made, is by, made by Troxel. As you can see, it has kind of like a rubbery uh, grip to it. It's not like the, uh, you know, the cheap pads you get at the box stores. Having a good grout float really allows you to embed the grout very well. Another thing is that I never really stray away from is using a good sponge. This is an Ardex sponge. These, uh, you know, they really, the square edges make it easier to, to smooth things out and it really just, it, it really takes out a lot of that grout. So I really highly recommend a good grout sponge. Uh, and that's really about it. So we just want to measure our water, mix it. Now, again, this stuff is fast setting. So if you're in a, a hot, dry environment, this might kick off on you a lot quicker than you want. Uh, usually you get about 20 minutes before you have to remove the excess grout. That's why I'm suggesting using smaller amounts. And if you were, if I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do all of these walls. It, it's a possibility with one bag. Um, but I'm just going one bag at a time, but I do recommend you just do the walls first and then do the floor last. The reason I would say the floor last is because you want to be working over top of a newly grouted floor when you're doing the walls. So do one or the other, and then you can complete the process. Uh, you know, sometimes it might make a lot of sense to grout the floor the night before, cover it over, and then do the walls. That also makes a lot of sense too. Um, but we're going to get as far as we can on this, remove it, and then mix the second bag. Uh, and, and so forth after that. So always measure your water and use cold water. Now, if you want this stuff to last even longer, like I said, if you're in a hot, uh, dry environment, it's gonna kick up on you. If you have a lot of daylight coming into your bathroom, any daylight that hits it is gonna create it to set up faster. Uh, and if you wanna have better, faster, or longer pot life of this, use very cold water and then you can mix it by hand. I recommend mixing by hand. Uh, it'll just give you a lot longer uh, scenario. Now I'm in 70 degrees, maybe even like 65 degrees right now. It's not very, it's like a moderate temperature. It's not very humid, it's not very dry, 
but I'm gonna go ahead and mix this with a mixing paddle. Again, if you're in a hot environment, I would probably go against mixing it with a drill. That just makes it, you know, basically harden up quicker. But in my experience, I feel like I'm gonna be just fine with mixing it that way. And it'll only take about 20 minutes before I can remove it. So make sure you measure your water, one quart of cold water per bag. And it's actually like 1.1 quarts so you can add a little bit more water if it's getting too clumpy. So it has a really pancake consistency to it. Okay so I would just recommend just wiping down the surface with a damp sponge. This is going to help glide the grout over the surface. Now this is a very smooth tile so it's not gonna you don't want you don't want it dripping wet like the worst thing you can happen is if you have any water coming out of the joints because it's just going to wash out the joint so this stuff is really sensitive to water once it hardens once it sets up then you can you know you don't want to use too much water it's basically the problem so anything that's wet you're going to want to be have it dry out and then really it's just about paying attention to your grout joints and uh just filling them fully. I would say don't stress too much about the excess grout on the actual surface. Just pay attention to whether the, the joints are full because this stuff will come off of this tile fairly easy, easily. But you basically just pack it in 45 degree angle, try to remove the grout. But your biggest concern is just making sure that they're nice and filled and that you don't have any area that any pinholes or areas that grout's not filled. So this is a, a slightly off white, as you can see. This is called honey butter. Kind of has a little bit of a beige tint to it and I always recommend if you are going to go with a white grout I do recommend epoxy for that because white is going to be the hardest thing to prevent staining and is always a problematic type of color so I always try to recommend to my clients that they use an off-white or a gray something like that but if you were going to go with white Go with the epoxy, it's gonna be your best bet. It's gonna cost you <laughs> four times as much as this grout's gonna cost. But with white, it's just something that you don't wanna have an issue with. Kinda of like the idea of having this already sealed in the corners. I don't have to worry about the keeping the grout out of the corners. So smart. Yeah, I just, I, somebody recommended that. I'm like, that's not a bad idea. That's way smart. Because then you don't have to worry about the silicone smearing onto the grout joint. You kind of just double to quickly go over it and not have to worry about that silicone smearing. How long did it take? half the time it normally takes, I don't know, a couple of minutes. Now at the tub joint, I am gonna be scraping out that grout before I caulk tomorrow. So don't worry about the grout getting into that joint, it's not a big deal but you do need to caulk the tub. There's no other way about it. Like it's not gonna, it'll just crack and fall out of there eventually. Okay, so again, yeah, just pay attention to all these joints before we move on. Make sure they're all filled. And again, don't, even, don't worry about the excess on here. This is all gonna remove fairly quickly or fairly easily, I should say. 
but if you don't have the joint filled, then it's not much you can do. You're gonna have to go over it again if you don't have everything. Because, you know, the idea is basically to get this grout flush with the tile. So if you see anything divoting right now, fill it in so that you can get a nice flush, smooth joint. So this is definitely a lot easier grout to spread than any of the, than epoxy or any of the premixes. It just has a more fine consistency to it that makes it easier to embed this. It's not as sticky, I guess you can say. It really kind of glides over easily. If you're, if you're a contractor that's just starting out, you're 20 something, I mean, maybe you don't even own a house. You own a car, which depreciates every year to the point where that's worthless. So like no one really wants your car. <laughs> you know, no one's gonna sue you for your car. No one wants it. Uh, it's not really necessarily a good asset. So if you don't have any assets, then you have the ability to take a little bit more of a risk. And that's why like, you know, a lot of people that hire contractors pressure them into having employees so that they don't have any liability any of any sort if something goes wrong. So I'm just saying, you know, having an employee is kind of like a, a legal commitment that you're making. Like a child? <laughs> kind of. No, but it, it is, it's a legal commitment that is providing you with a secure way to take care of them and yourself liability wise. You know, if your employee cuts his finger off, you're gonna have workers comp to cover that. No one's getting sued because they cut their finger off. If you hire some guy and you're paying him cash or even a subcontractor, you're telling him what time to be there, you're providing all the tools, you're telling him how to do things, you know, like he's not, he's not really a subcontractor. Even if you got him his own insurance, that would be better than nothing. But like, you know, it's just not the protection that if you have assets that you, you want, you want to have that employee protection. That's why all the municipalities ask you, for your workers comp and you know how many employees you have like it's every every person's of liability but if you're just starting out you don't have anything to lose and you have the ability to you know not, not that it's safe i'm not saying it's safe to do that i'm just saying that you have less to lose you have less to lose and, and really the contract of a, an employee is, is it doesn't benefit you you're not gonna make more money because of it. You're, no one's gonna give you any extra incentive because you have an employee. If anything, all you're doing is spending more money. You're less competitive. It's harder to make money with an employee because of all the overhead. <laughs> and ultimately, nobody's happy. You know, you hire a 20 year old kid for 15 bucks an hour. By the time he's done by the end of the week, he's getting eight bucks an hour and he's not happy with the, amount, the money that's coming in, but it's costing you a fortune to have them. So. Well, and, and I, I do, I do believe there's a timing of when it makes sense. Like, you know, I am starting to get at the age where it does 
makes sense. I can't keep abusing my body to do things. I have all this knowledge. So if, if this was the only avenue for me to make money, then employees does make sense for me. I do have assets to protect. I do have, you know, and, and like I said, I, I can't do all the work all the time where I don't want to. So that, that, that is where that can make sense. It's just a different level of stress. Um, but, you know, if you're gonna stay in the trades for long enough, I mean, everyone's gonna wear out and you're gonna have to, if that's the way you're gonna make your money, you're gonna have to just hire people. So I think there's a time and place. I just think it's basically when you're older, when it makes sense to do that. Because, you know, once you make that commitment, that contract with the government, there's no... It's hard to turn it off. It, it doesn't turn off. Yeah, no, you're, you're committed. And, and even, even on an accounting sense, when you pick up that employee, like you're not getting paid for those intimate administrative hours. That is just extra crap that you got to do. So, I mean, you really have to think about it. Do I really want to go down this road? I mean, and it is a legitimate way to go. It is the most way to protect you, the way to protect the worker, the way to protect the homeowner is to have an employee. It's a legal contract that is providing, you know, a certain amount of precedence in the courts with whatever it is, whether they get hurt, they're not going to sue the homeowner. You're, you know, you are doing everything legitimately. So it does protect everybody, but at a very steep cost, you're less competitive. You're having a harder time competing with others that don't form to that. Like I'm an independent contractor by myself. I don't have to carry workers comp because it's just me. And so my prices can be cheaper because I don't have all that overhead. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of people like me. And, you know, I just, it's hard to, you know, you're, you're, just, you're just chasing, chasing money. That's not, that is just temporary. It's not like real, it's not like it's real profit. You're, you're, you're continuously reinvesting into the business. You know, your employees are, you know, are temporary. Very rarely do people just stick around. Yeah, retention's really bad. Retention's bad. Yeah, all of it. So it's just like, you know, every time that you teach somebody how to do this, yeah, you got to do it again. How much more time is that? You know, I mean, especially when they do it wrong and then how much does it cost you to correct it? You know, like <laughs> there was a period of time when that plywood was $90 a sheet. Like I wouldn't even want like a worker that didn't really know how to use a saw cutting that stuff because I didn't want to have to buy another $90 piece of plywood because he screwed up. So you have a lot of things that you spend money on that you might not even be really thinking about when you're considering, you know, going the official route and hiring an employee. And, and that's one of them, just material costs, waste, Things that don't work out right, because it does cost money to teach people, you know, and that's not gonna be on the client, that's gonna be on you, the contractor, who's hiring that person. So, just be careful making that kind of commitment if you think that employees are gonna be the right way to extend your business a whole lot of stress and when the down times are there it's hard to hold on to everybody you end up having them do things that you could do yourself and make a lot more money but you're giving it to your employees because you need to keep them around and so like you know you can have a good year you can have all these phone calls coming in and then the next three months you're barely getting anything and then you know you're just all your profits are being eaten away and you're just waiting for the next lottery ticket to help make it all make sense. It's a big rat race. Okay, so now we got this all done. Now we can just clean up a little bit 
and then start cleaning the grout. So that's gonna be, that's probably a solid 20 minutes probably. So that really, that takes out that entire 10 gallon or 10 pound. How much square feet? That was uh, what, 77 plus 5, 4, 20, 40, 112, 120 square feet. So that's not bad. Uh, basically three thirty seconds, almost an eighth, I'd say. And the towel is thick. I mean, the towel is a good three eighths inch thick, so you have to account for depth too. Okay, so we'll just clean this tub and then move on here. Yeah. So basically, the way that you kind of look at that at this is you want to be able to touch this and not pull grout off of your finger. So I'm, I'm still able to pull grout off of here. You want it to be almost kind of, it's already starting to feel a little bit dry, but it's just, you want to be able to mold it with your finger and not pull any of the grout out. So I still, I can still wait another five or 10 minutes even, and then we'll test an area. And that's really usually the best belt. That, but when you can start like still touching it and you're actually literally pulling it out then it's not dry enough. It needs to skin over a little bit more. You need to be able to just kind of poke it and move it. And then, then you can really start scrubbing it. Okay, so a damp sponge. You don't want to have any water in this thing. Water is going to be the enemy to this type of grout. So just make sure you wring it out. And we're going to test an area just to see what this is going to look like. So circular motions, and you want to be able to basically pull the joint and not pull the grout too far out of the joint. Now that's where these square edges on this does wonders. So that looks pretty good. So, I mean, I could, I could even wait another five minutes and it, that could work too, but I want to see it's, this isn't too bad. You just want to avoid pulling any of the grout out of the joint. And it looks like I got a piece of that leveling clip. So in this initial wash, it's just pretty much smoothing out the joints. Now you're gonna have to do a final wash after this completely sets up. So don't worry about any of the haze that's gonna appear on here. It's not a real big deal. You just wanna make sure that your grout joints look nice and smooth. So with the hexagon, you're gonna have all these different angles you kind of have to go around. So it's, it's kind of a, there isn't just one motion. It's basically just trying to get each section smooth. So all I'm doing is looking at the grout joint itself. I'm not worried about what's left on the tile. I just want to have some nice, even smooth joints. Now, on a more gritty type of tile that has a lot of texture on it, this will take a little bit more effort, but since this is all nice and smooth, this really makes for an easy grout removal. So we got some pinholes. Fill that in before You don't have any issues with having to go back. No, I mean, it's not the end of the world going back, but you have to do, you do have to mix more of the product to do that. You do have occasional pinholes you gotta fill in. We're gonna check out before we completely let this dry too. So we'll move on to the other walls, but sometimes they do form from the air bubbles coming out. I mean, this still is, That's probably pretty we're going to have to let that sit. 
I mean, I'm, I'm at right at, you know, I honestly could have let that sit a little bit longer on this wall and it would have been a little bit easier. Not that that was very difficult. You just have to be really delicate with the sponge if you get on it too early. So, I mean, you know, you get this, there's a point where this is like really tough to remove and that's when it completely crystallizes over and then you can't like smooth the joint anymore, but there's so much time in between that. But if I did have like sunlight coming in or if I had a, some kind of floor vent blowing on it. I mean, it can get it could go get ahead of you, but very rarely does that happen because you have a good, you know, even after 20 minutes, you still have a 20 minute window to be able to remove it. So I probably rushed out a little bit. We're gonna let these sides sit a little bit longer and I'll show you how much easier it is when it's hard and a little bit harder. So you can see right here. So this is, this is a good 25 minutes later. So you can see how it's a little bit dry. I'm able to kind of press on it and it's not, really coming off on my fingers. So that's kind of what you want it to look like. There's some loose spots here. So that's like a little, that's a little wet there. But you know, when you start seeing it look like this, then you you can pretty much start to remove it. So you can see, I just kind of smooth out the joint and doesn't really take much effort. The most important thing, it's not pulling any grout out of the joint. So yeah, the waiting the allotted time, I can put a lot more pressure on these joints to smooth them out versus when it's a little too wet, you have to be really delicate. So I'm able to really kind of put a little bit more pushing motion on it, which does kind of help out because in being too delicate, you know, it can be, you can wash out the joint easily with a little too much water. Now that this is a little bit hard and it has a little bit more resistance, but it's nothing to be afraid of. It's something that, it's always the environment that you're in that kind of changes. It's a little bit, it's a little cold in here. So that's, I think that's why it's taken me so long. If it was a bit, if it was a bit warmer in here, I think it would set up in a normal 15 minute time. Is worth, worth worth having that leveling system. It really does make this look nice. And these tiles are really, they're pretty even. I mean, it really, mm -hmm. there really wasn't much off on them, and they're really well made. So I'm super happy with the purchase or the the tile that we got here. So I tell you what, if you get a hexagonal tile that's not even, it's an absolute nightmare. Like I'm saying, like the size difference, like if you're like an eighth inch off, <laughs> which, which our bathroom has that. It was horrible. Like I, I basically, I had bought and I had purchased 20% more for that bathroom. And I, I wasn't able to use them all because some of them were really far out of whack and I ended up uh, just not having any tile underneath the vanity because we ran out. That's why it looks like that. Underneath the vanity? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we I couldn't use them. I couldn't use eighth inch tiles that were off. It would throw off the entire pattern like ex extremely badly. So I mean having a good tile with a good distributor makes a world of difference because you don't have to really think about it. You could just order from there and, and know that you're not going to have an insane amount of problems. But yeah, that stuff, I mean, that stuff wasn't any cheaper than what this was. It just, you know, just like one box. I don't even know what it was. I mean, I, I was fine halfway through the bathroom and then I started getting into these other boxes of tile and they were just an eighth inch bigger and I couldn't do anything about it. I was already committed at that point. 
So I don't know what went wrong there, but. Did you end up ordering more? No, no, we just skipped going underneath the vanity because I just couldn't, couldn't make it work. And we, yeah, we're already in it. I'm not gonna order it and hold up the whole job over it. So, I mean, it's under, you know, the vanity covers it, you can't see it, but. All right, so this is already starting to haze over. We're gonna let this completely dry, you know, an hour and a half, maybe even two hours later, we'll scrub this down and, and wipe that haze off. The haze is not gonna be any big deal at all. But we're gonna go ahead and do this floor next because this is gonna take a while. These, these grout joints are pretty big and the way as cold as it is in here, it's just gonna take a while for this to set up. And on a floor, you kind of really want it to set up pretty nicely on a floor because if it's too wet, you're just, once you, you know, all these grout joints are just gonna drag the grout out of the joint. So it needs to be, you know, fairly stiff before you can even remove any of the grout. All right, so another bucket for the floor. So really we only had 20 pounds worth of grout to do this, so that's not too bad. Okay, so floors definitely hog up a lot of product, especially these mosaics, so just fill this in and let this skin over. It's gonna take a while for it to dry because these are some fairly big grout joints. Okay, so I almost took a whole 10 pound bag there. Don't have a whole lot left. That's a lot of grout. What's the square footage on the floor? Uh, what, uh, seven by five, 35 square feet. It's gonna take a good solid half hour before I can even get on that. Okay, so that's been a good, what, 40 minutes, you think? Something like that? Yeah. So it's just now getting to the point that we can start working this in. It's amazing how the temperature can really change how well this sets up. I mean, this is considered a fast setting grout and it's really taking a long time to set up for me here. But as long as you can just work it and not pull too much out of the joints, then you should be good to go. Okay, so but it's been a couple hours later. I just take a little bit of Windex and a scrubby pad and just scrub all this off to get all the haze off. So 
So more than likely you're going to end up having haze still form over and that's when I like to use this deep cleaner made by uh, custom. I just use a white scrubby pad and really scrub everything down and this is usually what really gets everything to be completely clean and haze free. So um, it is going to take a couple of times to get make sure that the haze doesn't form back and if you have a textured tile it's going to even be more important that you scrub everything to be able to remove that haze. All right, so there is no question doing the caulking before grouting really makes a world of difference. It looks amazing. I'm really happy with the way that works out. So now we're going to go ahead and do the tub for our final part of the caulking here. And one thing you want to do is make sure that you have a bunch of different options for caulking. So one of my favorite is this anvil caulking tool, but they do have these accessories that you can purchase that have a whole bunch of different types of size caulking tools essentially. So this is going to really help out. So it's about testing things, making, trying to figure out what's going to make the best uh, form to fit your tub in your tile. So I think we're going to use this number 10 angle piece for this and see how this goes. So keep in mind when you're caulking a tub, uh, it's not like a once and done thing. If you don't like the way it's being applied, you can simply remove it and just start all over again. But the biggest key is making sure that everything is dry. If you have any moisture, any water sitting on the tub rim or on the tile, it's going to be a problem and it's not going to adjoin very well. So uh, make sure everything is completely dry. And then if you have to clean up and, and take all the silicone out and, and wash it off, you're gonna have to let it dry and then try again. So you do have many multiple choices, ways to go about this or many times to be able to do it. So we're gonna be using the matching silicone. I always recommend silicone for the tub rim. It's just gonna last a lot longer than any type of acrylic type of uh, caulking. Uh, the silicone is just something that's going to be flexible and it's going to last a long time. So first thing is, is to make sure that you cut the tip uh, basically at the size of what your joint that you're filling. I usually go with about like a 3 16 inch cut on it. But try to be as uh, consistent as possible when you're actually adhering the silicone. do a good job too. Okay, so that worked out pretty well. So a couple days later, um, and actually in my instance, I finished the rest of the bathroom and then I'm going to go ahead and put the sealer on the grout. I really recommend that for large grout joints like this, especially a floor. Um, now this grout is stain resistant and like I said, it has a very fine aggregate. So it's going to hold up pretty well on its own. And technically you really don't have to seal it because it's still going to be really easy to clean. It's not, it's, since it hardens so much, 
it's gonna like fight off a lot of stains. But it's still a great idea to put some sealer on things, especially a floor like this. So very simple process, literally just roll it on and then buff it off with some microfiber cloths. So I have a little foam roller here and I'm just gonna basically make sure I saturate all of the grout joints with it. So just kind of work that in, let this sit for five to 10 minutes and then remove the excess. You can use a brush as well if you want to make sure that they get into those grout joints. But yeah, as long as you coat everything, it'll all come out to be a nice even finish. Okay, so let that soak in. And the biggest thing you're looking for here is just that to make sure all the kind of the, the grout joints are kind of darkened and that you have plenty of sealer on each one of these joints. And then I really, I would recommend doing this every six months or so. I think it's a good idea to, to preserve the grout color. Because when you're using regular cleaners and things like that, you are gonna eventually take off this layer so it's not a bad idea especially on a floor like this you know these are big grout joints and you don't want to have you know once it's stained in any way then you're, you're gonna have a you know you're gonna have a problem so we'll let that dry for a little bit and wipe it off so five minutes later just take some microfiber cloths and you're just basically buffering and removing the excess off the tile it's really that simple and this will dry to its natural color too. So the penetrating sealer is not gonna darken the grout joints. It might look dark right now, but once it dries, it'll be completely the way that it was.